everybody. My name's Scott Hebbard and uh, tonight or today our webinar is entitled Cybersecurity Modelling in Enterprise Architect 15.1. I'm joined uh, in this webinar session by Bob Huruska. Bob is a Principal Consultant at Spark Systems Central Europe. He's a speaker and trainer with over 20 years experience in software and systems engineering. He has played various roles in several industries, delivering systems and solutions that offer real value to customers during his career. And also he's contributed to the cybersecurity profile that's brought to you in Spark Systems Enterprise Architect version 15.1. And my name's Scott Hebbard and I am the communications manager here at Spark Systems. So this is part of our global, Spark's global presentation series. Now, Sparks Global encompasses Sparks companies from all around the world that facilitate services, support, localization, training, mentoring, and much, much more around all of the Sparks systems tooling. So this includes Enterprise Architect, and we're looking at Enterprise Architect 15.1 today. Uh, we also have Spark Systems Pro Labrate and the Spark Systems Pro Cloud Server. So if any of the content today or in any one of the series piques your interest, uh, please reach out to the Spark services in your region and they'll be more than happy to help out. You can find their contact details on sparksystems.com slash partners slash sparks dash services dot html. You'll see on screen that there's a go to webinar screen. Simply enter the text and hit send or hit enter on the numeric keypad and that'll come through to us. Uh, here, your host. So please note that audio is muted for all participants, but you will be able to type questions. And if we can't answer them live, we'll follow up offline. But what I'd like to do now is hand over to Bob. You can get stuck into our presentation talking about cybersecurity modeling in Enterprise Architect 15.1. So once again, welcome, Bob. It's great to have you here uh, presenting. So great to hear Thank from you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott, for, uh, very much for such a kind of introduction. It's both a great pleasure and a great privilege to be here and speak to you today. My name is Bob Hrushka from Spark Systems Center Europe. And now, before I dig into the cybersecurity modeling, let me introduce us. We are the experts for planning, designing, and implementing enterprise architecture management based on Enterprise Architect. As an experienced partner, we support organizations in software intensive industries. We use established technologies and open standards, best practices, and current market challenges like cybersecurity modeling. In this webinar, you will learn about the security and safety challenges arising from the way how the systems are currently being developed. You will get an understanding of the need for change in terms of potential security threat prediction. Later, you will get familiar with the concept of threat modeling and see how the threat models using the cybersecurity uh, profile introduced in currently last version of EA and resolve the threat model by applying, applying selected mitigation, visualize and communicate it to all stakeholders. I will start with an introdu introduction uh, covering modeling challenges and followed by reasoning why we should care and how to make the situation in terms of cybersecurity better. Next, I will quickly walk you through the threat modeling aspects. After looking into possibilities for threat modeling, I will cover the notion of such modeling in enterprise architect along with the demo. The English word threat has many meanings. It can be used to describe a statement of intention to conflict pain or a person or thing likely cause damage or danger. It can be used to describe an event such as hurricane damage poses a major threat to many coastal communities, and it can be used to describe weaknesses or possibility or, of attack, such as what are you doing about those attacks threatening your castle walls? Speaking of a castle as an analogy, threat modeling is a fancy name for something we all do instinctively. If I ask you to threat model your castle, you might start thinking about the precious things within it, such as your royal family, crown jewels, and other valuable assets symbolizing your power and continuity of the monarchy. Then you might start thinking about the sorts of people who might break in 
and the ways they might break in, such as a battering ram to smash down the gates or strong walls Based on your findings, you will first address the many predictable threats your castle can face. The fortification would consist of three main design elements, the mod, the keep, and the bailey. The mod is a large earthen mound with a ditch surrounding its base. The keep on top of the mod is a castle's primary defensive element. The term bailey refers to a yard formed by flattering an area alongside the mod. By the way, the modern Bailey Castle was a true European innovation. So I, I can see how that all works, but uh, what if the intruders set fire to the walls or they um, put flint and burning material inside the walls to set the buildings inside a light? Right. Sophisticated fire launching techniques designed to burn down the castle were developed and used great success. So what happened then? The model and Bailey design became less popular in the medieval period. A new approach in castle design had emerged. And with the new approach, great era of stone castles had begun. But the, uh, the development of weapons was probably faster than the means of defense, resulting in the eventual obsolescence of the castle. You certainly don't see them around now. So what's the, uh, the moral of the story? Well, threat modeling is the key to a focused defense. Therefore, keep it updated. Very good. So what security and safety challenges arise from the way systems are currently being developed? Let me name a few. Building automation system servers are wide open to the internet with no identification. Backdoor service passwords on systems are published in easily obtained service manuals. Some, de some devices have nothing even resembling security. For instance, an insulin pump manufacturers publish specifications in patent fillings for communication protocol. Hacker, hacker simply needs to buy parts or build a software-defined radio, increased usage of third-party products, standalone device vulnerabilities, to name a few. And keep in mind, product security is not just about network or internet-connected products only. Disruption or misdirection of services provided by systems and networks are not only causing data leakage or systems malfunctioning, but the organization reputation damage. Reputation damage can have sequential effects, starting with the loss of customers, expenses on compensation, leading to organizational failure in the worst case scenario. Integration of secure development concepts into an existing development process can be intimidating and costly if done improperly. Microsoft has put a terrific effort in this matter, helping developers build more secure software by reducing the number and severity of vulnerabilities in software, while reducing development costs. Microsoft SDL is a collection of mandatory security activities presented in the order they should occur and grouped by the phases of the traditional software development lifecycle. Threat modeling is a core element of the Microsoft SDL. Threat modeling means a lot of different things to different people. I want to be clear about what I mean when I say threat modeling. I mean a design analysis technique that's been designed to ensure that all engineers can participate, not only security experts. This is in contrast to, for example, the, uh, the IETF. That approach isn't wrong, but it doesn't work for everyone. Generally speaking, threat modeling in software development is about ensuring that the code properly restricts users to perform only authorized actions. Secure software starts with understanding the threats. Threats are not vulnerabilities. Threats live forever. They are the attacker's goal. Unlike pure verification techniques, such as penetration testing or fuzzing, Threat modeling can be performed before a product or service has been implemented. This helps ensure that a product or service is as much as possible secure by design. 
On the left-hand side of this slide, we have the specification or intended behavior of the application. This is what the application is supposed to do. Then the application gets coded, which is the second rightmost circle. We have actual behavior to compare to the expected behavior. This is the process of testing, find problems, fix problems, and make the two circles merge. But functional testing only finds bugs on the left part of the Venn diagram. These are behaviors that should but don't happen. To find the security box on the right side, we need to train ourselves to look for what isn't there. To look in places we don't look in traditional testing. We need to think about what should not happen. Any questions so far? So, so how do we... I'd, yeah. I'll just uh, have a look. There's uh, no questions at the moment, but I, I suppose I just wanted to say that, you know, you're leading up to the point where, you know, one thing that Enterprise Architect's really good at is doing the modeling and uh, uh, modeling for those future scenarios. So that's great. All right. So now how threat modeling helps? Well, it helps you avoiding introducing vulnerabilities and identify vulnerabilities in an existing solution. Threat modeling enables you to bring solid foundation for building secure and safe solutions addressing confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Let me go back to what I said earlier about a castle analogy and the moral of the story. Threat modeling is not a one-time only process. For threat modeling to be effective, it must be a recurrent iterative process that starts during the early phases of the concept of the project and it continues throughout the development up to the implementation phase. It is not possible to identify all threats from the beginning as the design of the system matures and implementation is in progress. Additional threats are identified during that. Thanks, Bob. So can you tell us how we can actually perform the threat modeling? Well, we follow a four steps process. The threat modeling starts with a stress diagram uh, type, which is a specially developed diagram derived from data flow diagram. From the diagram for each element, we identify potential threats. For each threat, propose mitigations. In some cases, the mitigation takes the form of changing the design itself, in which case the new or, dam or changed uh, element must be analyzed in an additional iteration. When the mitigations have been implemented, the product or service is validated against the threat model to ensure that the mitigations work and that design functionality and performance are sufficient. So how do we establish a taxonomy of these uh, security threats? Great question. We, we use STRIDE. STRIDE is an acronym for the threat types of spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure and denial of service, and the last one, elevation of privilege. STRIDE is a way to find a wide variety of threats using these easy to remember threat types. Not all threats fit easily into a stride category and some threats might fit into more than one category. What is more important is that uh, than fitting a threat to a category is using model to help you describe the threat and design in an effective mitigation. Microsoft uses the stride model which categorizes different types of threats and simplifies the overall security conversations. Each threat is a violation of a desirable property of a system. I will not describe each threat more in details as this is not the focus of this webinar. And now, let's see what benefits you can leverage by doing threat modeling in Enterprise Architect. Thanks to the cybersecurity profile introduced in EA version 15.1, developed in partnership with us, you can create a threat model enabling you to analyze the potential vulnerability using stride and form a mitigate plan. 
one of the benefits of using EA for threat modeling is its integration with other software or system development disciplines directly into the model. Having threat modeling built into the core product solves many of the issues of traceability. In addition, leveraging built-in means of documenting, model sharing, and visualization model elements you can easily distribute or communicate in an, an uh, entire project or selected parts of the model. So, if you ever wanted to do some of these tasks, referring data analysis, visualization, and communication in your threat model, Spark Systems is your vendor. Enterprise Architect supports heat map chart layout, which uses the color, size, and grouping of cells to represent specific aspects of a data set. This extends Enterprise Architect's bar chart, column chart, and pie chart features. Or do you feel like doing powerful model-driven reporting in web environment? Well, Spark's Prolaborate allows users to create a tailored set of views that reduce complexity, focus attention, and increases the accessibility of model information for the non-modeling community who are more concerned with consuming the models. If you're seeking for help, uh, if you're seeking help for uh, creating such diagrams or features to automate some of the threat modeling steps, feel free to contact us at sales at sparkservices.eu. Okay, and now let me demonstrate how Enterprise Architect can help you evaluate potential security threats and other benefits you can leverage by doing threat modeling in there. Now, let me show you how Enterprise Architect can assist you with performing threat modeling. In this demonstration, I will show you how to create your first trust diagram. Then I will make you aware of some diagram validation rules of thumb and some tips on diagram iterations. Threat identification using Stripe, how to mitigate them, tracing them to other models, and the last topic will cover the ways how you can communicate a threat model to all stakeholders. Now let's have a look and see how we can create such a trust diagram. So I will navigate to the correct package and open a dialog for creation of a new diagram. Here you can filter out the correct diagram groups, select trust diagram and by confirmation you will open a new diagram. In the toolbox you see all the relevant elements for creation of such a diagram. So now I'm just putting all these three. As you can see, every element, when I place it onto a diagram, has its own subtype. So I just place the process. If you accidentally didn't assign a subtype, you can do it later, as you see over here. And now the last element, boundary. This is a special kind of boundary, so-called trust boundary, which can either represent a corporate network, internet, machine, sandbox, user, kernel mode, and so on. Using a quick linker is a great way how to create a data flows between, between two elements. By adding name, we will assign the information being conveyed by the data flow. And let's do that on the other side as well and we will put there you see that ea makes threat modeling easier for all developers through a standard notation for visualizing system components data flows and security boundaries uh, let me align the diagram a bit and that will be it all right so the second part of diagramming covers the diagram validation rules. I prepared, I prepared a set of rules and uh, let's have a look at the first one. What we see here is one process sending and reading some data from SQL database. Uh, do you think that does the data magically appear? Of course not. Data comes from external entities. So we gotta create a customer customer 
with sending some orders through the web server and then it's later stored in a SQL database and of course the web server usually provides some information in this case it's a confirmation towards the customer let's have a look at the second one so what you see here web server and some some data store um, we just created black hole of course we are missing someone to use it the data from from the database in this case so we gotta create uh, yet another process and create a data flow so please avoid black holes all right let's have a look rule number three all right in this case we just created the magic why magic well the data apparently doesn't flow magically between the two databases well it goes through a process again so a process is missing between the databases so I just created uh, RMA process taking care of the, uh, the data exchange between the two data stores okay so let me just adjust it and one more data flow you see the quick linker is a big help and one more okay and now let's have a look at the rule number four uh, what are we missing here so yeah so let me walk you through the process so we have two processes and mm -hmm, we are missing trust boundaries trust boundaries so add trust boundaries that intersect data flows or point surfaces where an attacker can interject functional or sorry machine boundaries uh, privilege boundaries integrated boundaries boundaries are examples of trust boundaries Threads in a native process are often inside a trust boundary because they share the same rights, identifiers, and access. Processes talking across a network always have a trust boundary. So we are missing two trust boundaries, administrator and domain admin. Let's come back to the overview. I'll do some grooming closing all the diagrams which I'm not going to use anymore and all right so now diagram iteration when it comes to the diagram iteration well start with an overview which has a few external interactors one or two processes one or two data stores and data flows to connect them Check your work and make sure that it matches the reality. Update diagrams as product changes and make sure that your diagrams not resemble flowcharts, class diagrams or core graphs. I highly recommend to create diagram layers depicting different levels of abstractions. So start with the context diagram, which is a very high level, which depicts the entire component or product or your system. Then the level one diagram is high level, focusing on single feature or scenario other levels are created if needed great so let us assume that we created our diagrams and now let's focus on the second step of threat modeling which is consists of identifying the potential threats using stride how can enterprise architect help us doing this step the best way how to start a process of identifying threats is to slice and dice our level one diagram into some other diagrams representing uh, scenarios so i'm going to create a new diagram and uh, i'm gonna give it a name admin instructions the admin console all right confirm it and by selecting those elements which are involved in a scenario and copying them onto the newly created diagram, I will nicely 
create a new diagram reflecting the scenario using just those elements which uh, now I'm interested in. Each element in the diagram is susceptible to one or more thread types. In order to create a thread, you will use the thread from the toolbox and by dragging and dropping onto a diagram, we will create a th uh, first thread which represents spoofing the admin. All right. And uh, as a text, so admin user may be spoofed by an attacker and this may lead to unauthorized access to admin console. All right. And now let's make the text visible uh, directly on a diagram by setting the uh, nodes make visible in a compartment of the element. And and as a next step, obviously, we got to create a link between the thread and the um, and the data flow together with those elements. To connect the elements uh, with the thread is not important, but then you can better leverage the features such as insert related elements and you can see it better in the traceability window. Okay, thread mitigation. So once you correctly identified and categorized threat, then you gotta figure out how to mitigate such a threat. And as you can see, EA can greatly help you because there are already pretty fine mitigation checklists, which you can easily assign to the identified threat. The next step after you assign the mitigation strategy to the concrete uh, concrete threat, then you need to indicate that uh, you started the mitigation state and you selected a checklist. So let's do some some checks. Let's do some some round. Uh, what is the appropriate countermeasure to uh, to mitigate? that concrete threat. Okay, so I just identified its appropriate authentication and don't store secrets and mitigation strategy is according to the checklist. All right, and of course you can set the threat priority to too high. The best thing about the Predify mitigation checklist is that you can modify the content of the checklist accordingly. Uh, then I wanted to show you the traceability window that it reflects the reality that you see what is threatened by which element and you see very nicely the traceability with, res with respect to the, to the threats identified. All right, tracing to other models. In reality, the threat modeling can um, be a, a consequence work after you already created some diagrams. So let me show you how easily you can create a relationship to the previously created diagrams. So I will navigate to the right diagram. So let us assume that we have this context diagram and uh, previously we created Diagram. So I will go to the other, other models, and this system context uh, trust diagram reflects the reality of our use case diagram. In order to create a traceability between those elements, you just uh, use I, I used in this case uh, generalization to reflect that those elements are uh, those elements used for trust diagram are specialization of the use case diagram elements. Okay, well, how to communicate your threat model? Well, I prepared already uh, some templates using the virtual virtual document uh, concept and uh, I'm going to generate a threat model report using 
the virtual document structure. So it will, s it will take some time. And uh, how to use this virtual document? Uh, so there are other webinars available in the webinar library. So go and check them out. All right, so it's done. And let's see how the document looks like. So the content, this is the first way how to distribute your threat model uh, using the, uh, the text generation. As you see, you clearly see even the tra traceability uh, of the elements, meaning that threats, what the concrete threat threatens, you see the tagged values, uh, what type of the stride it is, in this case repudiation, and it threads all those three elements. All right, let's come back to Enterprise Architect and uh, let's have a look at other options, how you can visualize your threat model using built-in capabilities of Enterprise Architect. Enterprise Architect can create a number of different charts. This dashboard I created clearly demonstrates how you can analyze your threat models by visual aggregation or relevance, or how you can identify emergent trends with ease and respond quickly, just like you see in a heat map. So you see the threats overview according to the type, priority, state, and mitigation strategy. And finally, Let's see how Prolaborate can help us visualize our threat models. Prolaborate leverages the model data in Enterprise Architect to allow the wider user community to analyze, interact and make key decisions. You can fully control visibility of your threat models by selecting packages from EA model to define sections that are shared to your end users. Prolaborate also lets you determine what is accessible to a specific user or a user group. With Prolaborate, you can design intuitive dynamic dashboards using Dashboard Designer. One of the best features is the ability to create dynamic level graphs and charts based on EA model metadata and tagged values. This is the true powerful model-driven reporting delivering real-time reports to business users. The data you are looking at is representing our castle threat model. In these two views, you see different visualizations of the processes that depend on the external entities and the threats to the processes used by them. With these powerful visualizations, you can present any levels of your threat models in a single page. Interactive charts let you dig into the EA data. Well, that's about it for this part. We've covered diagramming, threat identification, threat mitigation, tracing other models, and threat model communication. Now, I would like to move on to the final part of our webinar. Therefore, I will pass you over to my colleague, Scott, who will open the Q&A session. Scott, the floor is yours. Thanks, Bob. So just before we get into the questions, there's been a, um, a few people saying that they'd like to review the uh, demonstration. So we'll be making the demonstration available on our YouTube site, so Spark Systems YouTube site, and that will uh, most likely happen within the next 24 hours. And I uh, will also be making the entire webinar and uh, the presentation available. So that's great. Um, a few people were asking about uh, what version of Enterprise Architect and what build it is. So we're currently using build 1526 and it's Enterprise Architect 15.1. So uh, lots of people have uh, listed a few questions. So uh, the first one, Bob, is around uh, version control. And um, Stefan has asked, uh, can a threat model created in EA be subject to version control? So I was wondering if you could uh, speak to that, please. Um, let me put it this way. The simple question is, of course, there is no no problem with that because as any uh, threat model, look at it as any other uh, model. So uh, you can use the built-in capabilities such as the package uh, baselining, or you can use the, the integration with uh, other 
third-party version control systems, or you can use uh, third-party extension uh, dealing with uh, with version control, such as um, to name to name one, a lemon tree, for instance. Excellent. Uh, so um, there's <laughs> I saw that there's a, a a question here from Edward saying, you know. I will uh, need to review the webinar offline later. Will there be a recording available? So yes, uh, one will be made available on the uh, Spark Systems website and on the YouTube website. Uh, at one stage, you um, made the notes available. I also wanted to let people know that if you hit N on the uh, keyboard, it will automatically bring up the notes as well if you don't want to permanently display them. I was wondering, Bob, if you might be able to talk about some of the uh, traceability benefits of being able to model the security threats in Enterprise Architect and then being able to link those to you know, SysML diagrams or ArcMate diagrams or other technologies that have been developed within Enterprise Architect. Right. Um, so threat modeling, look at it as uh, another set of practice uh, which allows you to do the threat modelings. and uh, uh, you can link this threat model to any type of your previous work or your following work using the standard uh, uh, traceability options what you have uh, in the video. What I um, in a during during the demo I, I I showed you for instance the traceability between the use case diagrams and the threat model. Threat model doesn't uh, doesn't is not created right away because it is uh, it is a result of uh, of security requirements or uh, requirements analysis or your previous architecture diagrams such as context diagram and all these diagrams of course you need to trace to the uh, to the to your trust diagram so uh, did it answer your question ah uh, yes. Yes, oh, okay. no, that's, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, Michael had a question uh, saying, is there a difference between threat and risk management? Now, I think oh. there's definitely a difference between the two, but um, perhaps I'll let you uh, speak to what you think some of the differences between uh, threat management and risk management are. Okay. Um... By identifying threats, you are eliminating potential risks. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Yes. So a risk, a threat can can be a risk that uh, potential risk that a, an attacker can uh, can hack your system. So that's that's the difference. Okay. Uh, so we've got a question from Dean saying for your average bespoke application, say a website that provides public asset access to business data, how long would it take to, you know, create the threat model? So perhaps you can talk about, you know, for the the demo, how long it took you and, you know, what are some of the the um, time implications for being able to create a... Uh, All right. Uh, we have to differentiate two, two things. One thing is to create uh, the trust model using enterprise architect uh, based on already recognized threats. So what I was showing you during the demo was how you can use the tool to capture uh, the findings about cybersecurity. The other thing is to actually find out what are the threats and that's a time consuming thing. So you have to do it uh, aside. So EA is helping you only to, to describe the identified threats, not to evaluate the threats as such. Yes, so as per usual with lots of uh, architecture and modeling, the, the modeling is a quick and easy bit, but sometimes the investigation and the iterative process of uh, developing and identifying those threats and uh, right. finding them out can sometimes take quite some time. Uh, I and saw, a lot of uh, yes, and a lot of iteration, <laughs> yes. Uh, but for many people in the audience, that will keep them employed. So it's a lovely thing when you get it right. Uh, so uh, 
at one stage you created a um a requirement checklist now i know enterprise architect supports checklists for requirements but was that part of the the template or had you pre-written that checklist? Uh, the checklists are the mitigation che checklists which are already uh, pre uh, pre-created and uh, you can use it and there are even some patterns which i forgot to show during the demo so there are pretty fine patterns in in terms of for instance there is this uh you identify the threat on um, on spoofing spoof spoofing type of threat and then you use the uh, pre-made pattern which automatically shows you the mitigation for spoofing with all the options in a checklist the best advantage of checklists, again, you can edit them, you can uh, you can modify them, the pretty fine ones. You can add your own, and uh, or you can you can delete the the pretty fine ones. So that's, that was one of my follow up it. questions. Can you edit it? Can you modify it? Can you change it? So, <laughs> right. um, also following up on that, uh, you used an EAP file uh, in the demonstration. Uh, are some of those patterns or the EAP file, uh, are they going to be made available for people to have a look at, perhaps? Yeah, great question. Actually, yes. So we will provide the EAP file, uh, which people can actually even use the pretty fine template. So uh, don't look at a template that is the final work. It's just uh, supposed to show you the direction how the final result of a threat model report can look like. And together with, uh, you can see the structure of the model, how the threats are, are organized in a group by package and, and so on and so forth. So yes, you will have the EAP file available to, to download. Excellent. So we can then make that available on sparksystems.com under the list of webinars. And uh, there's hundreds of hours of webinars for you to have a look at and uh, certainly uh, some introductory material on Enterprise Architect 15 and uh, a number of Sparks Global webinars that are available for you. Uh, there's another question that's uh, talking about training and saying how much training is needed to get other business stakeholders to understand threat modelling. So is there an easy learning curve? So I suppose that's something that you might be able to talk about. We can see that the email address sales at sparkservices.au is there, but um, how would people go about you know, getting training for um, perhaps stakeholders that aren't technically minded or um, people that need to understand the threat at a governance or board level um, without understanding the, you know, the technical details underneath? Right. So when it comes to the training, as I, as I mentioned during the presentation, we talk about threat modeling, the, the, easy, uh, the easier approach of threat modeling. So the learning curve is not that steep. And uh, we are able, as Spark Services Center Europe, uh, we can provide you a training in, in this matter. And uh, yeah, to make your start easier with identifying threats, uh, threats and uh, using Enterprise Architect uh, uh, capabilities. Excellent. Uh, so there's another question saying, you know, how would you model threats to physical security, uh, given some of the focus of the demo was looking at, you know, software threats. So uh, is the Stride model capable of looking at, um, you know, physical security as well and modeling uh, issues around physical security? Yes, uh, you could use that as well. Unfortunately, the main focus of, uh, or the way how the threat modeling was implemented in Enterprise Architect, I'm talking about the uh, uh, predefined subtypes of those elements, such as the storage uh, actor and so on and so forth. Uh, you would just select some uh, some of the most uh, appropriate to your hardware design, but uh, the concept of threat modeling remains the same, no matter if it's uh, related to software or hardware parts. So yes, you can you can use that. Excellent. Uh, at one stage in the um, the presentation, you looked at at heat maps. Uh, so where does the heat maps get their data from? 
So oh, in other words, that's... so that you know, you know, um, which big square is the scary square? How does it get the data to automatically populate that? All right. So let me start EA again, and I can I can show you the. So the trick consists of this SQL query. So this SQL query actually fetches the data which are then visualized in a heat map. And by the way, as I already mentioned, you will also get this query already in there uh, together with the EAP file. So that's uh, another advantage. Yeah. So you if you. Not yeah. only can you watch it on YouTube, but you can get the EAP, you can get that SQL query and, you know, automatically right. build that dashboard, uh, you know, that's catered to your own model. Um, I suppose following up on that, there's a question about, you know, can the model be extended uh, with stereotypes, etc. Uh, so obviously you've got the base level SQL there and you can make some changes and, and update mm -hmm. things and you can absolutely. Archimate models and and SysML yep. models and other things. Uh, so uh, if you could perhaps just talk about you know extensibility and um, you know being able to build upon this threat model. All right. So uh, when it comes to the to the customization of the pre-built um, profile, um, there are the the regular options. So you can stereotype those those elements. Uh, by using a standard uh, feature in Enterprise Architect. And uh, if you have, uh, if you would like to have a specially customized uh, threat, uh, threat modeling um, covering the aspect of your organizations or the needs of your organizations, feel free to uh, contact us, uh, Spark Services uh, Central Europe, and we are happy to help you together with uh, not just describing or the means of describing your threat model, but we can also help you to automate the process uh, in terms of being able to automatically recognize the potential threats based on your diagram drawings. Excellent. I might just do two more questions and then I'll wrap up. So there's a question here from uh, Dimitri that says, uh, is there an automatic rule checker? So I'm not sure which. I think I just happen. I just answered that. So no, yeah. no, <laughs> no. But uh, yeah, if you are interested in that matter, uh, please feel free to contact us, and we we are happy to help you. And uh, finally, um, I suppose the uh, you know the last question, which you've um, also alluded to, uh, what other types of uh, training and uh, consulting and services does uh, Spark Services Central Europe offer to the customers and um, people listening tonight? Uh, okay, so besides the, the training on implementation of threat modeling in Enterprise Architect and uh, aspects of uh, threat modeling as such, we can also prefer the regular trainings uh, covering aspects of uh, systems engineering and software engineering. Uh, and also we have uh, some other uh, frameworks implemented in, uh, in Enterprise Architect. I'm talking about other MDG technologies implementing other frameworks to name, to name one uh, C4 model, uh, which uh, is a model focused on agile users. So yeah, feel free to check out our, our website. Um, in this case, yeah, uh, what, what I wanted to say, <laughs> yeah, that, uh, feel free to check out our website, sparksystems.eu, where all those public trainings are listed. Excellent. So uh, perhaps if you can uh, return to the slides now and I'll just uh, wrap up uh, briefly. So, um, there's a number of webinars that are coming up over the uh, coming months that I just wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, hopefully these will be listed on our website in the next uh, week or so. 
there's going to be uh, some presentations on uh, microservice architectures in April. We're looking at a webinar on uh, Archimate, which some people might find interesting. Uh, there's some more content coming up on Spark Systems Pro Elaborate, and we're also going to drill down into some uh, Spark Systems Enterprise Architect 15.1 features, such as the new um, translation feature, and uh, looking at some of those. So I know some uh, updates went up on uh, the website, and uh, hopefully they'll get approved and get published next week. So uh, please make sure you come back to uh, sparksystems.com, check out the upcoming webinars and sign up for some new ones. I'd like to thank everybody for their attendance and for their questions. It's uh, great to have uh, so much uh, interaction by people all around the globe. And uh, it's really great when you see people from Europe, people from Asia, people from US, people from Australia, and everyone's all asking questions at once. Uh, it's really fantastic. I'd really like to uh, thank you, Bob, for your uh, excellent presentation and your content. Uh, so well. thank you very much. And uh, yeah, no really problem. appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, so uh, on that note, I'd like to uh, wrap up and uh, thank everyone once again. And uh, just remind people that uh, we'll make this uh, video and the webinar, the EAP files and uh, a few extras around the Q&A available on the uh, Spark Systems website. So uh, perhaps uh, we'll uh, send out an email next week when that all goes live. So just uh, give us a little time to uh, respond to some of the questions and to get things together. But we'll try and get the YouTube uh, video up and published within 24 hours. So uh, uh, this time tomorrow, you should be able to uh, watch the video again if you want to step through it and uh, have a look again. So uh, that's it from me here at uh, Sparks HQ. Thanks once again, Bob, and uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, have a great day, evening and night, depending where you are in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.